Hello Forge members and welcome to this week's Tutorial Thursday. Today we're going to be going over how you can go from a complete beginner to an absolute pro when it comes to data structures and algorithms. Now I want to thank everyone who filled out my recent feedback form for the Forge and I got a lot of feedback that I should have more tutorials on how to start off and how to actually learn from the very beginning when it comes to data structures and algorithms so here you guys have it. Now over this tutorial I'm going to go over exactly what you need to know in order to become a pro at data structures and algorithms, exactly how to find it, and exactly how to train. Now I'm actually going to attach a little resource at the end of this video, and it's going to be a roadmap of everything you need to know when it comes to data structures and algorithms to absolutely kill a job interview and consider yourself a pro, as well as how you can learn it and where you can find them. So stay tuned at the end of the video because I will be dropping that bad boy. Now before I start, I just want to stress the importance of learning data structures and algorithms. Like I talked about in our competitive programming tutorial Thursday, data structures and algorithms are the bread and butter when it comes to programming interviews. If you can master these guys, you can get a job at any top four company quite easily. So let's jump straight into it. If we try to Google a list of data structures, this is the first result we get. It's pretty much just a giant list of a bunch of different data structures and it's not really easy to tell where you have to start and what's important to learn. If we Google a list of algorithms, it's actually even worse. I mean, look how long the scroll bar goes on for. It's pretty crazy. So where do we start and how do we know what's important? Well, first of all, in terms of book recommendations, I have two for you guys. Number one is Algorithms, 4th edition by Robert Sedgwick. Now this is the book I first got when I started programming and while I didn't read the entire thing because I learned most of my stuff online, this was still a great reference book to have. And even though it's called Algorithms, it still actually has data structures in it, so don't let that be a factor when you're buying it. Now the second book is Introduction to Algorithms, the 3rd edition, and this is co-authored by a couple of different people as you see here. Now just like the last one this also covers data structures as well as algorithms so don't be alarmed and both of these books are just really good finds. As you can see one of the most popular things that it's commonly bought with is cracking the coding interview. While cracking the coding interview is great for learning data structures and algorithms it's more focused on interviews instead of the actual theory behind things. So if you're trying to learn the theory instead of just purely practicing for interviews and actually learning how it works behind the scenes, I would highly recommend these two books. Now the next resource I want to talk about is this course called T414. Now this course is completely free and it's online at this URL, which don't worry, you'll get the link to after the video. And it's really awesome because it pretty much goes in depth on how to solve a bunch of competitive programming, data structures and algorithm problems while also giving you problems that you can use as examples. So you can see here, he provides different uh, PDFs and lecture slides depending on what you're trying to learn. And then afterwards, he gives you some problems on Caddis that you can practice with. For those of you that did the monthly competition, you'll remember this question, CD, as one of the competition questions. By the way, we will be releasing the next competition on June 1st, so stay tuned for that. Now, this is a great reference because it pretty much gives you a physical application of all the knowledge that you learn. It's really easy to go in and learn the theory of all these data structures and all these algorithms without having a proper place to test out your knowledge and sort of see where you are and how well you understand it. That's why this is a very important component to going from 0 to 100. It's important not only to just learn the theory behind things but constantly be applying it as well. Now what I'm going to show you here is the sort of little goodie resource that I made. As you can see here, I wrote down some of the fundamental data structures and algorithms that you should learn to go from a beginner to an intermediate level. Anyone that's at an intermediate level will understand and know how to code all of these things as well as how to use them in applications and know when it's important to use them and what type of problems you need to use them for. Now I'm going to quickly run through all of these. You can see here under the name I have where some good resources on where you can learn them. I have a hacker rank link where you can actually practice practice that specific data structure slash algorithm on HackerRank as well as the algo.is corresponding lecture that way you can find maybe some more comprehensive resources as well as some practice problems um, that you can do. 
And over here, you can just put a little completed yes or no, depending on your plan. So ideally what you would do with this roadmap is you would click file, you would make a copy of it. And in your own copy, you would keep up to date on what you've done and what you haven't done. For example, if you've uh, done this resource, you can maybe like bold it or delete it or something like that. And then once you're done the entire first section, which is arrays, you would just click like yes, complete it or put a little emoji check mark. So that's ideally how I want you to use this roadmap. So let me quickly go through all these different data structures and algorithms that I think are worthwhile to learn. So the first section is arrays, 1D and 2D. Now, if you look up here, you're going to see what I put here as level zero, which is the fundamentals of coding that you need to know before doing any of this. And if you look over here, 1D and 2D arrays are already here. But the thing is, there's a difference between understanding and being able to implement 1D and 2D arrays between actually under fully understanding them and how they can be applied, especially in coding interviews. In coding interviews, interviewers are really, really, really crafty and create some really interesting array problems that you wouldn't be able to solve if all you knew was how, the basics of how an array worked, which is why I still recommend going through these the algo.is lectures for it as well as the hacker rank problems for it because you can get some really tricky problems when it comes to arrays. Now, just a bit more over here, you can see here the fundamental knowledge are, are things like loops, while loops, for loops, uh, and for each loops, as well as do while loops. Now, for each loops is something not a lot of people like to learn, but I think they're very important and can actually streamline a lot of problems and a lot of different coding applications. If statements, that goes without saying, arrays, like I just said, and basic data types like integers, strings, floats, doubles, characters, etc., etc., and the final thing is big O complexity, which is super important for understanding a lot of things. Now, don't be alarmed. When it comes to big O complexity, you can get pretty complicated pretty quickly. But in terms of big O complexity, I don't want you guys going too deep. Just the very basics of what time complexity is and what memory complexity is. So the next thing is sets, hash maps, slash dictionaries. So sets are a really important data structure to know how they work and how they're different from arrays and hash maps and dictionaries which are sort of just a piggyback onto sets are very 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 important data structures that you're going to be using a lot when it comes to graph algorithms and stuff like that heaps are very good to know a lot of good interviewing problems come from someone asking you maybe to recreate a heap or telling you how a min heap or how a max heap works. So it's just one of those data structures that you might not use a lot, but it's still very good to know. Now linked list, this is probably interviewers, one of interviewers favorites. You'll find this on a lot of Amazon interviews, et cetera, et cetera. And just in general, linked lists are very, very, very good to know because they sort of piggyback off the concept of pointers, which comes from C. So understanding linked lists and the fundamentals of linked lists, as well as the different problems linked lists can have, um, is very, very important and I highly recommend everyone go through it. Stacks and queues goes without saying. Stacks and queues are fundamental data structures that you'll be seeing a lot in higher level applications such as graph theory. Now we're starting to get into the bit more complex uh, algorithms here. So adjacency lists are a specific data structure that you'll use a lot when it comes to graph theory. Um, there's not too much documentation on it. I couldn't find anything on HackerRank for it, but it's still very good to know. And I think even just watching one of the YouTube videos that I linked here in the resources is sort of enough to wrap your head around it and understand the concept of it. It's really nothing that complex. It's just something unique. Now, binary search trees and minimum spanning trees. As you'll see, there are a lot of different trees that you can learn. Actually, if we go back to our data structures, you can see here when it comes to trees, they actually have even four different um, four different sections for trees. So there are a lot of different trees. I recommend just covering the basics for now, which is minimum standing trees, as well as binary search trees. Those are fundamental trees that sort of every intermediate programmer knows. Now the next thing, which really should have been maybe a bit higher up because it's so common, is sorting and search algorithms. Now when it comes to search algorithms and sorting algorithms, there are a ton 
of them to learn from. Now, I recommend just wrapping your head, maybe watching a five minute YouTube video on all the common sort and search algorithms, as well as knowing how to code the most popular ones like merge sort and quick sort. It's no surprise that on interviews, a lot of different recruiters like to ask you to implement merge sort or quick sort from scratch. So it's really good to know just how to do these and have these in your arsenal, as well as understand the time complexity behind each of them. Now the last two things I have here are the fundamentals, the bread and the butter of graph algorithms, and they are breadth first search and depth first search. Now there's a lot more graph algorithms that we'll go into a bit more in depth in later tutorials, but to understand all of them you need to know breadth first search and depth first search. Once you understand these two concepts and you know how to code these from scratch given a very basic graph, you can officially call yourself intermediate when it comes to data structures and algorithms because you officially know all the because you officially know all of the intermediate things you need to know. Everything past this point, once you finish this entire list, everything past this point gets pretty complex and pretty specific. You start to see very specific algorithms with very, very, very specific cases. And at that point, it comes down more to knowledge and practice than just general understanding, as we can see here. There are a ton of different types of trees that you could learn, but in all honesty, a lot of them don't come up that often. So there you have it. The way I recommend you go through this entire tutorial is not only learning it, but for the data structures, actually code that specific data structure from scratch. If you're not too familiar with object-oriented programming, I would advise that you get maybe a bit of knowledge when it comes to object-oriented programming. It's not too super complicated to get a basic understanding of it. You can find a ton of tutorials online for it. It's a super popular topic. And I highly recommend you just create the data structures from scratch. As well as for the algorithms, make your own use case, make your own problem, and actually create the algorithm to solve it. And keep all of these data structures and algorithms that you've coded in a single place. For example, when I was practicing for interviews, I was doing a ton of questions on Caddis. And as you can see here, here are all the questions I solved on Caddis. But what I also did was whenever I learned a new data structure, I would completely code it from scratch just so I could have it on file and document it and just so I could say I've done it before. For example, here's my linked list and my binary tree. And I also have things like depth first search and Dijkstra's algorithm, which I've coded from scratch as well just to show to myself that I truly understand how the algorithm works and I have it at documented in case I ever need to use it in a future problem. So there you have it guys. Don't worry, this entire document will be on the Forge website. You'll be able to access all the books I talked about as well as um, some the list of algorithms, the list of data structures and the algo.is courses as well as this giant chart. This, like I said, is just to get to the intermediate level and I will be doing future tutorials on how to to understand and solve problems with every single one of these data structures and algorithms. So if you don't like any of the tutorials that are already on the market, don't worry because I'm coming out with some new ones. Anyways, that is your tutorial Thursday for this week. If you have any more feedback for me or any suggestions on what I should do the next tutorial Thursday on, please drop me a link. I will be attaching a feedback form to every email I send as well as in every single tutorial Thursday that I host. So thank you so much for watching and have a great Thursday.